direction. Top of the day, beautiful people. Top of the day, I'm saying poor connection. Can y'all see me? Tiffany, hey girl, hey. My screen went black for a second. Trina, hey girl, hey. Can y'all see me good? My screen went black. Okay, wait. Here we go. Okay. I think we're good now. Okay, you can see me. Okay. My screen went black. It was saying poor connection. Okay. Greetings, greetings. But I look a little cloudy. You know what? Probably because of my thumbprint again. Hold on, y'all. Make it any better. I'm sorry. Y'all, y'all still holding on. Betwa boo, betwa boo. Uh, Tiffany, you was right. You said after midnight. I just knew for sure. At least they were gonna have me by midnight. But you know, they um, they waited to start counting the mail-in ballots to the date. I'm thinking, I'm like, why? Why would they wait so late? But then, okay, it's cloudy from the sun rays. Okay, um. So then I thought about it. I thought about it. So I'm like, okay, they want to make sure they can get as many ballots in as possible before they actually start the counting process. So I'm like, okay, well, I fall asleep and wake up, and they still count. They have not announced a winner yet. But right now, um, and I was, I looked at a couple, um, I looked at a couple news outlets or whatever. I think everybody is almost consistent with what they have now they're just waiting on like uh nevada uh wisconsin but nevada on the map i'm looking at they have nevada and wisconsin um set aside for biden and then you got georgia which we won't get the results of that because how convenient that a pipe would burst in a building where they are counting the votes hmm okay so but anyway whatever <laughs> they they got the last four states, um, I'm sorry, five. They also have Alaska down here, too. I just looked down here. That was gray last night, but I guess they're counting. It's not official yet. Um, Alaska, Georgia, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Michigan. But I think the two to watch are Michigan and Pennsylvania because although they have um, set for President Trump right now, they could flip because they're running really close. And I was listening to Biden and he feels real confident that he's going to get Michigan and Pennsylvania. If he gets Michigan and Pennsylvania, he wins. Um, because he's still right now in a lead. And it, that means if he get those two and also the two that they have paid for him, which is Wisconsin and Nevada. Um, but right now, I've looked at the Google because it's doing live updates. So they have... Um, President Trump at 213 and Biden at 238. And remember, whoever gets to 271st wins. So it's running close. So I don't know. They they really may just let this go on for the rest of the day. And um, tomorrow may be a couple days, which I don't know. May not. I ain't going to say. Hear what I'm saying. I think because of all the media hype. And everything that they did to get a lot of people riled up. And they were there were some protesters out last night. They just showed a quick snippet of that um, on the TV news channel I looked at before I came downstairs. Um, in like four different cities. They said the protests were mostly peaceful. You know, you got a few people that get out of control. But nothing major happened, you know. So, um, But it may not, what I was saying was it may not be such a bad idea to kind of let it go for the rest of the day or um, the next couple days. Not saying I agree with it, whatever, but what I think it would do, it will help the, uh, the it ain't going to do nothing for people anxiety who's watching it religiously. But I think for some of the people that might be 
angry and mad it might give a couple days for some of their anger to subside just a little bit let some of that hot air out of them um but i don't know because the winter could be cold and all of a sudden that anger level shoot right back up i don't know i'm just speculating and guessing right here at this point but right now they have um uh biden in the lead at 238 and president trump right now stands at 213 so it's any it's really running neck and neck it's, it's any it's any man's game at this point okay y'all so um also I, I i don't know if you saw but just real quick we'll address the electoral college okay so here's something that i understood last i mean i i got it but it didn't really click until last night as i was doing some more looking over the electoral college and everything and a few people couldn't understand um how if you win the majority of votes in a state which is considered the popular vote and uh the difference between the popular votes and electoral so some of them couldn't understand where in some states like take um i believe illinois was it illinois it's a couple of them for instance where trump won the popular vote but biden won the electoral college now let's go back and do a real quick history okay so remember the census that they take every 10 years the census is what determines how many um elect electors you get for your particular state it's based on population so if you that's why texas and california and georgia and florida some of the bigger ones that they keep watch on they have more electors in that um state so say just for instance say your state gets one elector per 1 million in your population and some may have under a million some may have like 5 million so if your state has 5 million people you get five um ele electors in your state so really these only only these electors votes count towards the actual uh presidency who wins so remember people who are voting their vote counts but mm, it doesn't really because what what counts from the people is when you filled out your census and i think that's what threw a lot of people off because it didn't even really click for me like i said until last night as i was going i was like oh 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 snap so people who did not fill out the census and i think they don't let me tell you, the commercials that they did and pushing the census, I think they should have just been honest with people and let them know, give them a quick refresher. And the census is not just to see how much money your state are getting for programs that may be funded, which is true. That's part of it. But the biggest part of that is it strengthens the how many electors your state gets to actually count towards the vote for the presidency. So everybody that, hey, yes, I live here that filled out the census, your vote counts anybody that didn't fill out the census your vote doesn't count because technically you are not numbered in the count of the state's people if you didn't fill it out oops you know so now you know <laughs> for the coming four years so um but no i'm sorry now you know if you're still here living in 10 years when they do the next census remember the census biggest 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 thing is it counts you in the votes uh that your state gets for your electors okay so remember that you stuck with it now however many electors your state currently has because this is the 10th year census that they did it's gonna hold those are not gonna change for the next 10 years so in 10 years later when we get to 2031 they're gonna hold another census remember if you don't fill out that census and let you be counted in a state, it could affect the electors you get for your state that actually goes to the count of the presidents. That's why the numbers are like 238 and 213 because it's not counting the people's votes. It's only counting the votes that come from the electors. So now here's another thing too. Um, most of the states, when they count the votes, say you have five electors. Three of those electors vote for uh, Biden. The other two vote for Trump. Guess what happens? Winner takes all. So all five vote, all five electoral votes goes towards um, Biden, right? 
It doesn't matter who voted for Trump and electors. Winner takes all for your state unless you have a different congressional district in there. So that's why some states can have split uh, congressional votes, which I think it was for, I want to say it was Nebraska. I think Nebraska had a different, it's a couple of them in there to where you see, okay, so Biden got one here, Trump got two here in this state. So that's the only time you will see that. But most states, excuse me, only have one con congressional district where all the votes is winner takes all. So remember that, people. That's why, um, say, uh, let's say Biden can have the popular vote and Trump actually win the electoral votes. Or Trump can have the popular vote and Biden can win the electoral votes. The only thing that counts here, right here, according to all the states right now, is only the electoral votes, right? So that's how, that's what happened uh, last, um, the last presidential campaign. That's how Hillary lost because she won the popular vote. She had more numbers, all the millions of numbers that come from the general population of people. She had more of those votes, but remember, those don't count. They only counted really when you were taking the census, but guess what? There wasn't a census taken four years ago. It had already been done um, about six years prior. So whoever held those uh, elector seats, they were already there. So anyway, that's how she lost the popular vote and Trump actually won because most of the electoral votes from the electoral college went to Trump. So we'll see. It's running neck and neck. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. I, I, I already told y'all what I thought this time around. I'm like, yeah, based on everything I've learned from the last three years of my life here on earth and living in the United States and actually following some of this stuff and what people have actually done and checking behind things uh, that they said they've done, I'm like, ooh, you know what? Mm, I don't know. This is not going to fare too well for the current leader and i'm like yep and plus also with what happened um with black lives matter more so with what happened with george floyd now i don't agree with what people did but i i get why they did it they used that man's death as a way to um pander to the black population okay i get it i'm black i completely get it but if you go back, if you think when he passed and anybody who passed from that moment due to uh, police brutality or what have you, who um, and justice wasn't given for them, they say, listen, get out and vote. We can change it by voting. I'm, I'm like, OK, so I'm following it. But it almost seemed like them pushing to vote was overtaking the fact that we still didn't get justice for this man's life, you know, and how which. One of them have, you know, those are the things you really have to look into. And also remember, the president, they only have a certain amount of power. Remember, there's three branches. You have the legislative branch, the judicial branch, and the, uh, hold on, legislative, hold on, judicial, what's the other one, y'all? Mm, legislative, judicial, and uh, I forget the other one, but it's three. But anyway, it's a checks and balance. So really, you also have not just pick who you want for president. You have to pick the Congress seats, which, Congress seats, which comprise of the Senate and the House of Representatives. Hey, girl, hey, good morning, Krisha. Exact. Thank you, executive. And duh, how could I forget that one? Yeah, the executive, the legislative, and the judicial um, branch. So all three of those work together for complete checks and balance so guys let me see i just did an update it's still 238 to 213 so i don't know but based on listen based on let me tell you what i did so from the last election i'm just like who you know that was really emotional and you know i was like you know what? i'm never gonna allow myself to be put in that place again i'm really gonna get in here and i'm gonna start studying this stuff for real i had to go back to 
civics 101 from high school and relearn a lot of this stuff you know so also with teaching my children jeremiah too but he look he put on the elections before i did walk through the house with his laptop and his phone and stuff and got all his cousins on facetime they all watch i'm like okay i'm proud of y'all for watching and paying attention you know so um but what i did i'm like i need to emotionally detach myself so i can look at both sides with the un biased view before I make my decision right so but by doing that you see the pros and cons from both sides and especially if you are emotionally led one time you tend to gravitate towards one when you are not emotionally attached to anything you can make a level-headed decision and you can actually go in further and look at some stuff that seemed to be good on the surface but it's not so good when you actually look into it you know so and you look at laws that they've been trying to pass. And on the surface, like I said, that top law that might be passed might seem good. But you can look at all the other laws that they stuffed in under that. And that's normally how they do it. It's a, a major one that they talk about that's right on top. You know, but all these other ones, they stuff right in the middle that pass right along with it. And we're none the wiser because we don't look into these things, you know. So I'm just like, sheesh, you know, so... And it's not just us that's watching. The whole world is watching with us, you know. So, um, it, it that, that says a lot. Everybody always watches the elections here in the United States. Why? Because America right now is the superpower. But I think... I think our country might be on its last legs. You know, that's those are my thoughts and... You know, with what um, the current president has done and some things he did was good. Some things I don't think were too smart, you know, and I think it's really affecting the country in a major way. Um, and there are some allies that we had that are no longer our allies. And it's like, sheesh, I'm like, hmm. Although it seems like this is the best place to be in the world right now, pretty soon it may not be, you know, but those are just my personal thoughts and my own personal research. Um, so that was just a quick intro update of what's going on right now. And I didn't even gave my intro for the reading for today. So, but right now, just do a quick refresh. Yep, it's still the same. Biden's still winning at 238 and uh, President Trump is at 213. So, I'll check it again once I'm done with the reading. We only got three chapters for the day, y'all. So, happy Wednesday. <laughs> It is November the 4th, 2020, day 293 of the second year of reading through the books of the Law and the Prophets. And of the two-year consecutive day count, day 657. And we're going to read Psalms 99, 100, and 101. Oh, why wow, they don't like... Okay, so let's do through 102 because they all averaging about uh, five verses, y'all. So we'll be done in less than 10 minutes, so... Let's go ahead with Psalms 99. Okay. <clears throat> Yahuwah is king. Let the nations tremble. He sits on his throne between the cherubim. Let the whole earth quake. Yahuwah sits in majesty in Jerusalem, exalted above all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name. Your name is holy. Mighty king, lover of justice, you have established fairness. You have acted with justice and righteousness throughout Israel. Exalt you who are God. Bow low before his feet, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel also called on his name. They cried to Yahuwah for help, and he answered them. He spoke to Israel from the pillar of the cloud, and they followed the laws and decrees he gave them. O Yahuwah, our God, you answered them, but you are also forgiving to them, and you punish them when they went wrong. Exalt Yahuwah, our God, and worship at his holy mountain in Jerusalem, for Yahuwah, our God, is holy. Psalms 100. Shout with joy to Yahuwah, all the earth. Worship Yahuwah with gladness. Come before him, singing with joy. Acknowledge that Yahuwah is God. He made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and praise his name. For Yahuwah is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Psalm 101. I will sing of your love and justice, O Yahuwah. I will praise you with songs. I will be careful to live a blameless life. When will you come to help me? 
I lead a life of integrity in my own home. I will refuse to look at anything vile and vulgar. I hate all who deal crookedly. I have nothing to do with them. I will reject perverse ideas and stay away from every evil. I will not tolerate people who slander their neighbors. I will not endure conceit and pride. I will search for faithful people to be my companions. Only those who are above reproach will be allowed to serve me. I will not allow deceivers to serve in my house, and liars will not stay in my presence. My daily task will be to ferret out the wicked and free the city of Yahuwah from their grip. Last chapter for today, y'all, Psalm 102. And this is a little bit longer. This is 28 verses. Okay. Hear my prayer, O Yah. Listen to my plea. Don't turn away from me in my time of distress. Bend down and listen and answer me quickly when I call to you. For my days disappear like smoke and my bones burn like red hot coals. My heart is sick, withered like grass. I have lost my appetite. Because of my groaning, I am reduced to skin and bones. I am like an owl in the desert, like a little owl in, far, in a far off wilderness. I lie awake, lonely as a solitary bird on the roof. My enemies taunt me day after day. They mock and curse me. I eat ashes for food. My tears run down into my drink because of your anger and wrath. You have picked me up and thrown me out. My life passes as swiftly as the evening shadows. I am withering away like grass. But you, O oh Yah, will sit on your throne forever. Your fame will endure to every generation. You will arise and have mercy on Jerusalem. And now is the time to pity her. Now is the time you promise to help. For your people love every stone in her walls and cherish even the dust in her streets. Then the nations will tremble before Yahuwah. The kings of the earth will tremble before his glory. For Yahuwah will rebuild Jerusalem. He will appear in his glory. He will listen to the prayers of the destitute. He will not reject their pleas. Let this be recorded for future generations so that the people not yet born will praise Yahuwah. Tell them that Yahuwah looked down from his heavenly sanctuary. He looked down to earth from heaven to hear the groans of the prisoners, to release those who, to release those condemned to die. And so Yahuwah's fame will be celebrated in Zion, his praises in Jerusalem, when multitudes gather together and kingdoms come to worship Yahuwah. He broke my strength in midlife, cutting, day, cutting short my days. But I cried to him, O oh Yah, who lives forever. Don't take my life while I'm so young. Long ago, you laid the foundation of the earth and made the heavens with your hands. They will perish, but you will remain forever. They will wear out like old clothing. You will change them like a garment and discard them, but you are always the same. You will live forever. The children of your people will live in security. Their children's children will thrive in your presence. And that, my beautiful people, is our reading for today. So I do want to I, I do want to share something with y'all. I brought it up before, but this might be um, really key for the next four years when the next election comes. Y'all should really look into it. Let me just go ahead and do the blessing real quick. I just thought about it. All right, so the blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6. Remember the first 21 verses? Is the Nazarite vow. Remember, a man or a woman can take that vow when you set yourself apart to Yah. Okay. And the blessing starts at verse 22 all the way to the end of the chapter, going to verse 27 of Numbers chapter 6. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his son, saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, May Yahuwah bless us and keep us. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. And this is a common blessing. If y'all went to church, or maybe not even to church, because I see it more done outside of the church than I do see it done in the church. You will see people when they're parting ways, they say, may the Lord bless you and keep you. You know, that's where that comes from. Sometimes they do a shortened version of this. Some people do the whole version of the blessing, you know. So, but that's what it comes from. Okay, y'all. So, let's go back here. We'll do it. It probably hasn't changed any, but I'm going to check anyway. Okay. So, it's still holding at the same with uh, Joe Biden at 238 in a lead um, and President Trump at 213. Okay. So, Y'all heard me mention the other day about the 6th Region African Union, right? 
So this is gaining a lot of steam here and not just the United States, but also wherever Africans outside of Africa are at, uh, also known as the diaspora, the African diaspora, those, uh, the descendants of those of the transatlantic slave trade, right? Okay, so make sure I'm going to try and explain this real quick in a way to help you understand so you can look at it. Okay. So granted, we are citizens here now in the United States. Anybody who's born in the United States are citizens here. Okay, so first of all, let me mention, you know how there has been no justice for most of the black and brown people and everybody who kills us in the street most of the time, they get off. You know, that lines up with what Yahuwah said. Those nations will judge themselves not guilty and pretty much saying they're going to get away with murdering you, you know, because they set themselves up in the system and when they judge or whatever they you know sometimes a lot of things are unfair you know you have people washing other people's backs just to get some guilty pleas in and all this stuff because if you didn't know it's not that they're just malicious some are just malicious but you also have to realize the united states remember every you got to look at all the pieces and how all this stuff is being done the United States is a corporation. It's a business. So any transaction that you have, let's call it transaction that you have with your state or with a government, it is all tallied under the, the corporate structure of how the United States is structured, right? The legal structure of it. Just like each state is incorporated, there are businesses under the big conglomerate, there are a conglomerate of businesses with the parent being the United States Corporation and each state is their own individual like company, right? That's why each state has different laws and stuff. Some of them are same across the board, but some states have laws that other states don't have, right? Some, thing, some states approve some things that other states don't, you know. Um, so if you understand that, you will also know that the prison system, they've also monetized the prison system, right? So the prison system and the prisoners that they put in the system are worth dollars. And you have to look a little bit into it. They're also traded on the stock market. They do it so subtly and so smooth, just like they package up and put together mortgages and stuff and sell them off a couple different times on the stock market. It's the same thing with the prison system and the people they send through the pipeline that they set up, you know. So some people may say, oh, they trying to get their quota of tickets and stuff. You could be right most of the time um, because everything is about money. Okay, so now just keep that thought. Understand that. Now let's go back to um the african union okay so there back in i want to say it was 2003 or 2004 but the early 2000s the african continent came together and granted they still got a lot of stuff they dealing with over there with trying to win everything back from the french and how the land was divided up so there are some presidents that are standing up taking back their reins and they're kicking china out and france out and that's why you got a lot of uh, uprising over there too because they have to break free from uh the the tyrants that rule over them like the people of that land should be able to rule their own land but they have to fix some of these bad deals that they've done with some of the other nations and they they just need to break away from some of these loans and all this stuff and they need to take the hit and rebuild they need to teach their people everybody there y'all more than capable than doing this yourselves but i don't i don't mind help you know, they can, if the French want to help, okay, but don't come in and then try and lord your power over the people who actually live here. That's like me letting somebody come live in my house because, you know, they're having a hard time. All right, let me help you out. Come on here, live in my house for how, what's, how, how much how much time you need, you know. So you come on in here, okay, this, this, these are the rules and stuff. But then you get in here and you start getting yourself on your feet and instead of moving out, you know, our, our transaction between us is done. I said, you come live with me until you get on your feet. I'm helping you out. Now that you done got on your feet, you decide you don't want to leave and you want me to go. But, bruh, this is my house. How you going to kick me out of my house and begin lording over me? That's essentially what they're doing in Africa. Not just Africa, but other places. But, you know, so Africa is standing up. They're trying to take their house back. They're trying to kick the bully out, you know. So, and the bully don't want to go, you know. So um, so that's what's happening over there. So now that you understand that, let's go back to 
the African Union. Back in the early 2000s, there was something that was passed into law because they know what's happening to their people over mm -hmm. here that's been scattered to the nations. And a lot, everybody over here don't want this. Uh, descendants of Africa don't want to go back to Africa, right? Okay, that's fine, whatever. But what they set up, because um, remember, all the nations come together at these different unions and different treaties, and they come to the to like the world conference table and they talk about different things and if they're going to be allies and how they're going to help one another okay we have these particular resources we can help you with this if you can help us with that because you have what we need can we work out some kind of deal so that's essentially what they're doing so well, what they did wait a minute it's a red P. i know that's a really good p um so what they did because the African diaspora doesn't really have a, um, we don't, what, what you want to call it, um, like a, somebody like in government to really stand up for us. Granted, there are African Americans in places of, in, in government and public office, but they can only do so much. You know, we're few and far in between. But what they set up is the sixth region. Remember where I talked about this the other day? The sixth, when you, whenever you hear sixth region, that is talking about all the African diaspora, all the Africans outside of Africa. They have a whole like setup just for this. They got like appointed head people in Africa that deals directly with the diaspora, and they have different heads of us of the diaspora. In different places, like in Brazil, um, like Dr. Uh, Harris, female, and she's been traveling around. She's been a lot in Illinois, in Chicago, letting the people know. So if y'all start seeing these African Union, these green African Union flags um, being shown, that's sixth region. So I was actually driving to pick my husband up from the airport uh, Monday, and as I was driving, first time here in Virginia that I seen somebody else other than me with the African Union, uh, Sixth Region African Union flag, I'm like, oh, snap, is somebody else here? You know, because I haven't been reaching. I'm like, hey, is it people here that they know is like uh, somebody I can connect with to get more information? How can we let this known, be known to our people? And I'm going to tell you why it's so important. They want to help us with some of the injustices. Very good, baby girl. They want to help us with some of the injustices over here. But here's the thing. They're waiting for us. They literally, to make a long story short, everything has already been set in place. And the United States Corporation has agreed to this. They've already agreed to the terms of this. And when President Obama was in office, he renewed it for another 10 years. You know, and that was the last year of his uh, presidency. No, no, I'm sorry. The uh, 2012, he renewed it and went out for another 10 years. So it'll be coming up here shortly in a couple years to be renewed again. And I don't doubt at all that it's um, not going to be renewed. I do believe it's going to be renewed again. So what they're doing that's in place, that's actually, um. Tootie, sit back. That's essentially the remedy for our people it, it it looks like the room let me just say it looks like and it it really really looks like because here's what will happen when more of our people acknowledge hey this is our remedy here already written in law that's just been sitting there nobody's touched it and they put it there but they don't they don't broadcast it it's like one of those things like oh that's been here all this time it's one of those type things that if you live in dirt poor on the street and one of your parents then passed or a family member passed and left you an inheritance and you have no clue that inheritance inheritance is there you living like a, a beggar on the streets but in all actuality you have a huge inheritance waiting on you Mom. if you would find Mommy. it if you go oh, look for it it's waiting there for you Mom. it's just waiting for you to acknowledge and they're waiting for Mommy, your signature you, you know but you can't do anything with Mom, it if you don't know you it I will. You know, that goes to say my people perish for lack of knowledge. So a lot of our people are still here perishing for lack of knowledge for the remedy that we have here already. Right. So what will happen is um, because the black nation is in a state of emergency, it will allow us to call an um, immediate an emergency vote. And I'll, I'll post the links again to this declaration of stuff down here. Um, in the comment section and in the description section for those on YouTube today. 
Um, it will essentially help us build our government within this government so we can go to the table with the other nations. They essentially wait for us to come take our seat. All these years, our seats have been empty. There are four seats waiting for us in the government and nobody's there. Nobody's there. Nobody's there. Nobody's representing us. That's why we don't get any help here in the different lands where we're scattered to because nobody from the diaspora, first of all, everybody's ignorant. I can say everybody... A lot of people are ignorant and they're not acknowledging that this is there. So they've become more vocal about it this year. I even, it blew my mind uh, yesterday. I saw Dr. Umar Johnson. Um, he actually went to Africa and he spoke um, and he acknowledged it. So it's more people um, learning about it. And I think if more people who are out in the public eye learn about it and more people are and they begin to speak about it. Um, then I think the word will travel a whole lot faster and our people can become informed. Like this is literally legal remedy. So here's the basic thing that needs to happen first before those four seats can be filled. We need to have at least 40 embassies set up, legit legal building embassies within not just the United States or whatever. Most of them I, I foresee will be in the United States, but also in other places in the diaspora like Brazil and the Bahamas and different places wherever we're located, right? So once, that's the first step. Once the um, 40, off, 40 embassies have been set up, the 40 embassies is enough for us to move to the next level. Then they will begin to hold... Um, an emergency election due to the state of emergency that the black nation is in with all the deaths and, you know, um, uh, not getting proper justice because we are all now, once this was put in place, we're all diplomats here. So whenever you see a transit uh, descendant of the transatlantic slave trade walking around here anywhere outside of Africa, we're diplomats of Africa. Remember, diplomats hold a lot of power. If you go to a country or here in this country and you screw over a diplomat, you bring trouble on the entire nation because the home country, uh, the homeland of that diplomat that you didn't just screwed over is now coming for you because you should not have touched them. You know, so think about all the diplomats here. Um, so once uh, the 40 embassies are set up, now they hold an emergency election and they fill the 10 seats. There are 10 seats where they you essentially have 10, um, let's just say, uh, uh, congressional people. And from there, once you get the 10 congressional people, there will be another vote held to fill the four seats. And when that vote is held, those four people go fill the four seats on the world stage with all the other other countries and now we have a say so in what happens to our people and it will be upheld by all the nations around there now it doesn't necessarily have to be upheld didn't everybody go to war but war is not the best interest of everybody it's really not the best interest of all the nations is if all the nations can learn how to work together but everybody don't want to play fair you always got one or two rogue nations that want to lord their power over everybody all right kind of like the super country we live in because as i studied it really is that we mom. are the biggest bullies on the block mom. i hate to say that yes okay Let me throw away, this guys. away. no do not throw that away um that ba that's just based on my own personal research and looking into stuff and like i said stepping back and looking at everything with complete truth and unbiased unbiased feelings about everything you know i'm just like hmm you know so but yeah that's it y'all so we need 40 embassies the 10 congressional seats and then the four seats will be filled on the world stage where we take our place and then rules and regulations and stuff and we can build communities we can literally some people if they want to go back to africa they can go back to africa or even here now what happens is we get we build communities where guess what no longer will United States have, matter of fact, they don't have jurisdiction over us now. Um, the diplomats of Africa, they do not have jurisdiction over us. But if you do not know that, you automatically fall default to your United States citizenship. And that's why a lot of our people get in trouble because we're ignorant of what. You cook my oatmeal. I will in a second. Pool. Hold on. You said yes. Yes, I will. Give me a second. Let me wrap you, this up. You're okay, going to say real. Bella. 
I'm gonna send you upstairs. Hold on, I'm about done. Okay, I gotta wrap this up. Y'all heard a little tiny lady. She she hungry. Okay, so um, once we get all that in order, people, you know, then we'll see a major change. So the communities will no longer be policed. Bella, I'm gonna send you upstairs. I said, wait a minute. <laughs> So we'll no longer be policed by the United States Corporation. We now can appoint our own leaders and our uh, our own police force or community. However, we set that up. And it's a lot of that happening now all over the United States. Just think about these people that are purchasing big plots of land and people are moving into it. If they invoke the, let's say, the Constitution or the treaty that... Uh, covers the sixth region, they will be okay. I'm not saying it might not be people that come up and test that because I'm absolutely sure there is going to be some people that's going to try and test that, you know. But then I think all hell is going to break loose because now we have the power, we've been had the power to defend ourselves, but we did not know. And the United States has agreed to abide by that treaty that, um, that they all signed and agreed to. All right, man. So, it's going to get quite interesting. So, uh, uh, hopefully in the, the next four years, um, by the time the next election comes up, whoever wins this one, uh, we'll see more of that. And we'll see um, we'll see the, the sixth region election process because they're actually, they should be about done with that. They have, they have our own election process and everything. So, we would, I mean, you can still... Um, vote in the United States, whatever, but there's going to be a whole new voting system for the sixth region all over the world. And the diaspora from all over the world who's considered sixth region will be and should be voting on this for our people, our nation. Every nation has their thing that they do. We have something there. We just have to take advantage of it, y'all. So, like I said, I'll post those links about that, you know, the sixth region. Um, and yeah, you know, if you haven't seen the flag, let me show you the flag real quick. Hold on. Hold on one second. Let me grab it. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me grab it. Hold on. Let me grab it. Let me grab it. Hold on. Okay. Hold on. Let me chill over so you can see. Okay. So hopefully you'll see it unfolded. Okay. So this is the sixth reason. Well, no, I'm sorry. It's not just the sixth region. It's the African Union flag. Bella, watch out. Okay, so you probably see me post the picture. But this is it. Right? Can y'all see it? It's a simple flag. You can put it on a flag pole. My scratch um, me. So if you see this, you should start seeing it more. And especially if you guys are in Atlanta. Um i seen a, a lot of stuff. They rolling deep out in Atlanta, like um, Killer Mike and T.I., they know about it. So I'm sure now they're doing more research and looking into oatmeal. it. So, um, you cook my oatmeal. Yes, baby girl. Once they start, really, you can find a few videos on YouTube now um, with some of them from the sixth region talking to Killer Mike and T.I. about this. Instead of, um, and they're comparing like the Trump plan for black America and the Biden plan for black America. And it's like, why do y'all even have to do this? There's a plan that's been there for us since the early 2000s. Obama even mentioned it, but we didn't know. It went over our heads. I had to go back and watch this stuff from former President Obama. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh, how much stuff we miss. Okay, Bella. And goes over our head when we just don't have knowledge of a thing. So guys, that's it. I need to go. She's really hungry this morning. Okay, so I'm gonna check one more time where we at, and hopefully we'll have we'll know the winner by the end of the day. If not tomorrow, hey, I guess we we'll still be waiting. Okay, so yep, it's still the same. Nothing has changed. Uh, Biden is still at two thirty eight, and um, Donald Trump is still at two thirteen. You know, I don't know. So we'll see if my dreams. I shared my dreams with you. Um, we'll see if my dreams was true or not because my dreams. <coughs> go against the popular vote right now <laughs> and my dreams all of them that i had said the same thing so we'll see um we'll see if president trump's time is up all right it's it right now it's looking like that it's really looking like that so okay guys let me go talk to you in the morning bright and early 7 15 once i finish feeding them i'm gonna go ahead and post those links and stuff so you can look at about the sixth region 
um, and all that stuff. All right. All right, y'all. Love you. Peace. Peace. Girl gone somewhere. Boo.